Hello, everyone. Welcome to Global Government News. Today is Wednesday, July 20th, 2011, and I'm Darko. Uh, GGNonline.com is my website. That's www.ggnonline.com. Uh, DDarko2012 is my YouTube channel. Uh, check uh, both of those out. Uh, you can search through my website here. I have a poll here that's uh, been closed for about a day now, uh, but uh, if you haven't checked it out, uh, I guess I'll go over the results. It says, do you believe failure to raise the debt ceiling will hurt or help the American people, not banks in the long run? And I could have made this uh, poll. It's uh, I wanted to put a neither, actually both or neither, um, because neither would have been a good option. But either way, 61% uh, uh, say that it would uh, help the American people, not the banks, if uh, they didn't raise the debt ceiling. And 26% uh, said it would hurt them, uh, followed by 7% saying both. Um, you can follow me on uh, Google here on the blogger right there and to the right track GGN and then down here all the way to the bottom is uh, you can uh, follow me on Facebook follow this blog um, I'm gonna start off with the economy here uh, most of the if not all the links will be posted unless I run out of room or have quote technical issues so Wall Street flat as debt worries offsets earnings it says here stocks closed near unchanged on Wednesday a day after Wall Street's best rally since March on the oncoming debt ceiling deadline so they're gonna uh, uh, be able to uh, steal more of your money and uh, waste more of it and uh, so the uh, the greedy Wall Street people uh, they're up in arms and they're and they're happy and everything is gonna be great just like the stimulus and the bailout which brought jobs oh wait wait a minute it didn't um, it didn't uh, bring us out of a recession, and uh, this isn't going to prevent a default. <laughs> so it's all just more crap. It's more uh, mass stealing. And I'll have more news on that towards the end of this video. China's stocks opened slightly higher on Wednesday. I said they opened uh, on Wednesday a little higher with the benchmark Shanghai Composite Index up 0.48% uh, to open at 2800 and. 10 and then the next up we have some news on the euro it rises versus dollar as eu summit nears the euro rose against the dollar on wednesday on hopes euro zone leaders uh, would reach a deal to ease greece's debt burden though concerns about contagion to other european economies uh, mostly uh, spain and that uh, should keep the bloc's currency vulnerable treasuries u.s stocks decline amid debt concern and china faces a dilemma in u.s treasuries uh, says uh, here china has little choice in the quote uh, but to continue buying u.s treasury bonds in the short term despite the potential risk of washington defaulting on its obligations to foreign bondholders and uh, China, the largest foreign bondholder of U.S. Treasuries, increased its holdings by $7.3 billion to $1.16 trillion for the second straight month in May. Yeah, they started big time, and that was according to the U.S. Treasury Department. Uh, since the end of 2010, uh, China has been uh, uh, purchasing more and uh, actually expanding. Uh, I'll cover that, too, in this video, or uh, actually another video about uh, China buying uh, Canada. It's one of their biggest uh, uh, oil um oil producers so and of course africa i'll get into that later uh here's commodities uh basically still on the upward uh, slant here brent crude at 118 dollars that was up along with gas and uh, heating oil futures moving down here uh, to agriculture it says here that uh, we have kind of mixed right here but uh, mostly coffee uh, uh, and corn and cotton were all down cocoa up a little bit and uh, wheat futures up a little bit uh, wheat also uh, says here sixteen dollars moving on to gold here copper at four hundred and forty three dollars up three point two five gold at uh, one thousand six hundred and one dollars so that is a landmark uh, number for gold investors in that uh, but uh, today it was down a little bit silver uh, uh, back now at uh, forty dollars and eleven cents but it was down a tad too and it says here oil up eurozone hopes outweigh product build then next up we have iran launches international oil bourse it says iran's international oil bourse has officially been inaugurated on the persian gulf island of kish for the convenience of international customers it says the iranian oil bourse opened on wednesday during a ceremony attended by iran's first vice president it says the national iranian oil company is expected to offer 600,000 barrels of heavy crude oil for sale on the first day uh launch of its bourse and um says the 
that the plants who offer 50,000 barrels on a regular daily basis once all the necessary requirements are uh, satisfied. Iran, OPEC's second largest oil producer, has the world's second largest natural gas reserves after Russia. That's right. Uh, home construction increases. U.S. Uh, housing construction rose in June to its highest level in January or since January, uh, but much of that growth was in the volatile multifamily sector and reflects a rebound from bad weather earlier in the spring. More housing news. We have housing sales uh, fall as fewer First-time buyers go shopping. Fewer people bought uh, previously occupied homes in June. Um, it says here, putting this year on pace to be the worst for sales since the housing bust. And um, it was just a scam is what it was. A well-thought-out, methodical scam. And um, most uh, uh, most of the pledges are slaves, you know, I'm included. Their, their biggest asset are their homes. Uh, they don't actually own the land. Uh, that they that the houses sit on that's why they pay property taxes but the homes is the one investment that they do try to have and so this is just another it was another uh, uh, I don't what would you want to call it um, an attack it's an attack on middle class people mostly and uh, it's financial warfare is what it is high cancellations depress home sales then we have sales of previously owned homes had a seven month low in June it's a man for condominiums fell says here, moving on, uh, AP mortgage robo-signing continues in Michigan and other states. says the mortgage industry uh, employees are still signing documents that they haven't read and using fake signatures more than eight months after big banks and mortgage companies promised to stop the illegal practices that led to a nationwide halt of home foreclosures. Get ready for a 70% marginal tax rate. Some argue the U.S. economy can bear higher price pre-Reagan tax rates, but those rates apply to a much smaller fraction of uh, taxpayers and what's we're, and what we're heading for without spending cuts. So uh, go in there and check that out. It says with unemployment stuck at 9.2 percent. Actually, the real unemployment rate uh, 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 prior to this uh, the new way of doing uh, or calculating employment is around 20 percent. So almost one in four people, one in five people that you know is going to be unemployed or uh, just laid off. Or it says here and a vigorous economic recovery appearing more and more elusive says here that uh, a bullet tax proposed by the mayor uh, or a mayoral candidate. So it says here, Otis Raleigh, get out of the, man, is that annoying. Otis Raleigh running in September's primary, says a candidate plan to reduce violence. Oh, so it's going to reduce violence. Oh, okay. In Baltimore includes a bullet tax. Okay, so that's going to, um, it's going to increase the cost of committing a crime. So... So if, uh, you know, if you're sitting on your porch and someone comes up to you and uh, wants to rob you or gets, tries to um, encroach on your personal space, your property, and or do you bodily harm and you, sh and you want to you defend yourself, you want to shoot them, well, now you're going to have to pay a higher price, you know, because that's criminal. That's, that's criminal for a slave to defend himself. So we better charge you more. Let's, no, let's not, uh, let's not uh, uh, lie to ourselves here because that's what we're doing. We're not just uh, uh, getting at the criminals. As we all know, they're still going to get their weapons and their bullets. And unfortunately, the good people, the moral people, are uh, uh, put in that group as criminals because they, uh, they have to uh, go in the, quote, black market or the free market to, uh, to, uh, to get what they need to survive. Uh, it says here, Terry Jeffrey. And, of course, it's going to be like that, guys, uh, for, like, light bulbs and stuff like that. If you don't want them to be, you know, uh, the type of light bulb to where it breaks, these energy efficient ones, they fall on the ground and break, and you got to call the EPA because they're so toxic. So it's here, t and it's so green. That's the irony of the whole thing. That's the irony of this whole, uh, this whole uh, uh, messed up world that we're living in. Like, uh, you know, most of the warming that we're feeling, in the, you know, when it's real hot outside, like, like right now and just uh, recently. Uh, it's attributed to the weather modification. It's attributed to the spraying of aerosols. Uh, it's not reflecting the heat back in space. It's cooking us like we're in a microwave under a, a you know a micro or a um, magnifying glass. I mean, come on. <laughs> and then they're going to try to sell a carbon tax like they just got shoved in there in Australia when the president said she will be no carbon tax, and then she lied and did it. So. 
It says here, Terry Jeffrey, workers at Government Lab uh, use dead people's Social Security numbers, so two employees of contractors working at the DOE or the Department of Energies. Oh, Lawrence Berkeley National Laboratory used dead people's Social Security numbers, according to DOE's official inspector general. And these national laboratories, um, these are the guys that uh, are helped creating these uh, synthetic nanoparticles, these little microbots. These little um, RF, uh, basically they're transceivers transmitting and receiving information and um, being used uh, uh, in tandem with this uh, weather modification with the towers and all that and satellite transmissions. And uh, basically they're uh, heating up the ionosphere and they're creating this whole grid in the sky. And uh, these national laboratories are the ones that are creating all of it with your tax dollars. So I hope you uh, are happy about that. Small firms. Uh, hiring fewer grads, demand for entry-level workers is an up notably from 2010, but small businesses aren't accountable for as much of the hiring as large firms. And of course, small businesses uh, uh, usually are hit and slammed the most with taxes and, and, and all that. Uh, and they don't have a large operating, uh, um, what do you want to call it, a budget and that. So, so when they start slapping all these taxes on them and uh, uh, increasing fees and to uh, and, um, and prices to uh, uh, basically have your permits and licenses, you know, it hurts them. And they can't hire workers. They can't, they can't have more people in their community employed because of that. So they just take, they'll have like one or two, they'll have a skeleton crew, as they call it in the military, and they'll just work them to death, which they did in, in the Marine Corps and the Air Wing. They just work, they would just work us to death, man. You know, if it took six, you know, 16 hours, you work 16 hours and you come back. You know what I mean? You barely have enough time to sleep and eat and go back to your barracks and you come back. Go to the go to the hangar. So it says here, uh, jobs or wireless jobs vanish. Then moving on, Iran's unemployment rate at 11.5%. That's probably not even the real. It's probably 20% just like us. It says here, consumers concerned about rising gas and food prices. RBC says, says more than half Canadians are doing more comparison shopping for food. Almost half are limiting impulse buys. About 30 uh, percent will make fewer car trips or take public transit and walk more. Gas prices that jumped almost 30 percent in May alone and food prices that rose 4.2 percent in the month are pushing the changes. Next up, industry experts believe fruit and vegetable prices will return to normal in coming months. This is, of course, for uh, Australia. Inflation spike looms closer, but no interest rate rises. Bank of England and the minutes show says here, uh, warns that more price rises. Inflation peak will be higher than we expected. That's Bank of America. Parents put babies, extra babies, on hold while they reassess their budget. And I mentioned this before, I think, uh, back in the day, actually having children was, I don't want to say an ass because that's very degrading their family and that uh, but it, they were actually considered assets they could help on the farm they could help work you know what I'm saying with the family that's why everybody had lived together with their families in three generations living together but now everyone's living alone you know and having a kid is just <laughs> come on that's why I said financial warfare eugenics all slushed together and that's uh, that's all I plan of course um, says here, of course, with increased infertility rates, Washington State women tried to sell her three-day-old baby at Taco Bell. Desperate mom, mom wanted five hundred to five thousand dollars. Says census percentage of children in U.S. hits low. Okay, so postmaster says days are numbered for Saturday mail delivery. You've been talking about a three-day week, and and an individual that I know who works. Uh, for the post office has uh, notified me, or not notified me, but it made me aware that uh, they're facing default here in October, so they might actually just shut down completely. It says here, $9.1 billion loss is of Bank America's uh, biggest uh, profit. And says here, Halliburton is also profiting. It jumps on strong U.S. demand. That's a military industrial complex. That's what we do in the U.S., says here, Minnesota lawmakers, okay, budget, a sure end to shut down. Then it says here, debt stalemate invokes language of Armageddon. Then 71% of Americans would rather see spending cuts than stimulus, according to latest American Pulse survey. But now the public tilts towards debt cap compromise, do they? No, it's just they're going to force it on, uh, force it down your throats, and they're just telling you that you like it <laughs> and you want it. <laughs> Says U.S. House passes huge debt reduction bills. They're going to cut six trillion U.S. dollars that you've been, you know, basically you pay. You're actually forced to pay into your little Social Security or Medicare and all that and, and whatever else social programs. They're going to cut all that, and then they're going to increase the the actual borrowing so that they can continue the unconstitutional uh, killing of. Uh, uh, 
uh, foreigners. It says here, Moody's suggests U.S. eliminate debt ceiling. Then what you need to know about the gang of six, I call them, well, they're, they're thugs. It's a, it's a good term, right? A description, a gang of six. They're thugs. It's, the government is a mafia. That's why I said we need to end this shit. It says the head of the world's biggest hedge fund sees economic collapse due to money printing by 2013. Economic gaps widening and influent uh, Israel. Then Israelis protest high uh, house prices. Next up, we have City Council OK's plan to have inmates work at Animal Pound. So again, another slave prison labor. Isn't this getting insane? This is the third story. Join me again. Uh, this is GGN and I'm Darko.